<laughs> We're starting to run out of time this week, so I wanted to just pivot to a story that I felt kind of flew under the radar and super, super important is this AMD microcode signature verification vulnerability discovered and reported by the Google security team. This is a team that Tavis and uh, some of Google's best researchers are on. Um, the interesting thing here for me is that it's only partial disclosure because of how severe it is. And the timeline, the reporting timeline, uh, Google reported it last September. It was fixed December 17th and private fixes started going out to users. It was disclosed on February 3rd, uh, but we still will not get any additional details until March 5th, 2025. Kostin, why, why, why do you believe this went the partial disclosure route? Uh, can you help folks understand the implications of microcode, um, the ability to essentially downgrade microcode mm. yeah i guess um well first of all maybe um before anything else we should clarify um how how severe this is and you were saying like this is very serious uh, in in order to be able to load this uh, malicious microcode uh, page patches your code needs to run uh, in ring zero so uh, like not in a vm but like the true real real uh, ring zero if you want and um, that already means, if you ask me, uh, for a malicious actor, it basically they have full access uh, to that system. So what they can do um, when, uh, let's say, they have ring zero access and they can load these malicious microcode uh, patches, they essentially could maybe trojanize uh, instructions. And they give an example here. Uh, where they sabotage um, the CPU hardware uh, instruction for generating uh, random numbers. And essentially compromising that instruction means that pretty much every single virtual machine on, on that machine that relies on random numbers is compromised. So potentially uh, traffic could be decrypted, SSL traffic could be decrypted, um, any kind of private keys uh, which are generated on that machine will be compromised. So the uh, potential here, I think uh, the impact is that um, uh, the consequences are kind of unpredictable. So when an attacker has the ability to rewrite the microcode, essentially uh, the code that runs the code in your CPU, so that uh, defines the behavior of how CPU processes instructions uh, in your computer, it, the impact and implications can be unpredictable. So an attacker with this kind of access, they could uh, potentially uh, sabotage things at such a level that is either undetectable or very difficult uh, to spot. And I don't know, potentially... Really undetectable they... too, right? Like any sort of traditional yeah. tooling is just impossible um, to... Even... Just imagine that they uh, create a kind of a backdoor in the microcode, microcode, which they later exploit through the network inside a virtual machine. You could say, yeah, but like, uh, why aren't they just infiltrating into that machine directly? There, there can be situations, you know, um, when uh, a certain, let's say, enclave or a secure enclave, uh, it, you can't directly inject into it. But on the other hand, you could sabotage the microcode, and that means that any kind of server or uh, web server or VPN or whatever running there uh, could be sabotaged. Again, I think, if you ask me, this kind of um, the the this vulnerability basically and the uh, exploitation for this vulnerability is not something that your typical average uh, ransomware gang uh, would care about or even like typical um, APT. But this is like the kind of vulnerability only the most sophisticated APTs out there would care about uh, in compromising the underlying security of the internet. My my main guess here would be just the sabotage, just cell connections, encryption, so they can, by tapping the uh, internet traffic worldwide, they can decrypt uh, encrypted connections. So that kind of level, uh, that is the level we are talking about here. Well, and you touched on it just a second ago when you were talking about like the, in this perfect world of root of trust, right? This here is compromising confidential computing at the core, like, like Kostin right. described. Why isn't this a bigger story than it is? I have no idea why it isn't a bigger story than it is. At the same time, I, I think, well, I think the explanation is simply we were getting tidbits right now from from the folks that have sort of discovered this found this and and sort of giving sense giving the sense that like they need some time to uh get fixes patched. i mean get, fixes get are fixes starting out. to go out yeah 
Yeah. So, um, so of course, like there's almost this artificial sense in which it's being, um, it's being sort of depressed as a, as a release. I think the other part of it is this is a very big deal, but it isn't necessarily a consumer approachable big deal, right? Like this is sort of like bigger, the, the, the bigger players need to pay attention and do something. And, you know, with, with similar like CPU vulnerabilities in the past, it's been really interesting because the the headache and the cost tends to affect the bigger players, like folks that are like running clouds, for example, and all of a sudden, you get, yeah, you get a patch for a security vulnerability, but apparently it means that like you now have a performance hit that you need to account for where like your your ginormous cloud of 4 billion Linux systems now has to account for like, yeah, in order to be secure, there's a... Uh, there's a you know microcode patch that means that you now take an eight percent performance hit, and uh, so those sorts of things are just not easy to grok and 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 to apply and to approach from the perspective of um, of the average consumer. They're a bigger issue for like the big cloud providers and folks that have to run these mega systems, uh, but they obviously matter. Uh, I just I just don't expect this to be all that easy for us to approach where I want to see the the true impact of it is how how many of these can we get before the big cloud providers who also happen to be capable of like you know Google can design its own chips Google can design its own meta can design its own servers at what at what point is are these enough of these going to happen where you start to get more involvement from these folks and saying, hey, you know what, like, we can't live with the unpredictability of what's going to happen with some of these like chip platforms. Um, and at what point do they decide to kind of create harnesses for for how these things are implemented, decide to have their own implementations of some of these things? I'm not saying that it's easy at all. I'm saying that it's fucking with a very big, big business stream. And at some point, I wonder when they'll decide that, like, they've had enough with some of the suppliers and vendors and that they're going to try to tackle the problem themselves, which would be super interesting.